College football has a question for you all this morning. I'm speaking on behalf of college football. The question being, are you not entertained? Truthfully, I'm not sure that we could have had a better opening weekend. And I'm going to hit as much as I can as we get further into it. But you all know where I have to start, even on a Tuesday. And no, it does not make me a homer. And I don't want to hear that I'm a homer for starting right here. And even though it is Tuesday, you sound like a homer. yeah, I might sound like a homer, but it's bigger than that. I got to start with Coach Prime, Dion's Colorado debut. I tweeted this and I stand by this. That might have been the greatest college coaching debut that I have ever seen. And no, I don't think that. And I'm not saying that because we have a son, Rogues, who I dropped off in Boulder. Well, Dodger Janet and I did. I think the reason I said that is not because we dropped him off there. The reason I said what I said is because I believe what I said. I think that is the greatest college coaching debut I have ever seen. Now, speaking of rogues, this is how transcendent the buffs were. Rogan Loam was blowing me up during the game. Like on my actual cell, he was actually texting me. I wasn't even sure he even had my digits. It's not like he ever actually responds to any of my texts. Normally, if I want to find the kid, I got to snap him. Snap I can only find him on Snapchat. Snap face. If I want to find him at all or can't find him at all. But there he was on Saturday finding me. And it was unsolicited, blowing me up throughout the game. Blowing me up about the buffs via text throughout that game. That's how transcendent that performance was. I got Logan Rome to text me unsolicited and multiple times. That's how incredible that game was and that debut and that win. And no matter how much of a believer or non-believer you were, I don't think anybody anywhere expected anything like that except for maybe Coach Prime. Even the people already on the bandwagon had to be in disbelief watching that game. Even the Colorado car flaggers were flat out stunned. Not to mention all the so-called experts and all the social media lava slingers. And even, by the way, his peers. The anonymous coaches that kept pot-shotting him saying there's no way this could ever, ever work. There's no way this is possible. Now, don't get it twisted. I'll own it. I was one of the non-believers. I was one of those folks who thought there is no way you turn over an entire roster like that on a team that crappy and then go out on the road and beat a team that was a three-touchdown favorite in their own house after playing for the Natty a year ago. Hell yes, I laid the points. And hell no, did I see that performance coming from the Buffs. But Coach Prime did. Hell, he called his shot. He told us he'd been saying it since he got there. Now, saying it and doing it are two different things. And to see them hit the field the way they did and perform the way they did after all that talk and all that hype, I mean, that bleep on Saturday was nothing short of jaw-dropping. It was incredible. It was stunning. I've had a few days to think on this. I've had a few days to think about it deeply. And although Dion has spent his entire athletic life making the impossible seem routine, I am still stunned at what I witnessed this past Saturday. This dude just seriously turned around one of the most desperate, depressingly lost programs in major college football in a single game. One game. In one game, Colorado went from a punchline to scary, again, in a single game. This is a program that won exactly one game last year. And they turned around and beat a team that just went to the natty. And they did so in their house. Look, I don't care how much TCU lost from last year's team. Dion still took a team that was 1-11 last season and went into the house of a team that played for the Natty and beat their asses on national TV. It's hard to imagine a more epic debut could even be possible or fathomable. Remember when he told us that he was going to bring his own luggage and that that luggage was Louie? 
Well, the luggage is, in fact, Louis. Now, to be fair, that iPad Pro or iPad Max that I got ripped in Mexico was out of a Louis bag. I brought my own Louis and my own iPad and got my own iPad ripped. But I, I checked it, so I deserved it. Anything. That's the thing about this win. That's the thing about this win. It wasn't just about the win. It was also about the talent. The explosive and electric talent. Like, they didn't go out there and kind of fluke their way through or slip by in a sloppy mess of a game. They went out and they took that game. They ripped that game by making enormous play after enormous play. There were big-time players making big-time plays on a big-time stage when they had to have it over and over and over again. Over and over. We were led to believe, while there may have been a couple of gems on this roster, maybe, there certainly was not that much more than that, and certainly no depth. Yeah, well, Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter said, please, please. How about Dion's kid? How about Dion's kid throwing for 510 freaking yards in this game? That any good? First game in FBS, and this kid drops five bills on TCU. And if not for a few drop passes, he might have been pushing 600. And not just the five bills, but how about four TD passes and not a pick? He completes 80% of his 47 passes. He literally threw for the most yards in the history of that program in his first game in that program. Man, you want to talk about build for it. You want to talk about a flatliner. Does this dude even have a pulse? I could not believe what I was seeing from Shador. But again, Pops tried to tell us. That's why the very first thing he did upon arriving in Boulder was name his QB or his kid, QB1. And even more insane than any of that, I'm not sure I can even call him the star of that game because Travis Hunter is him. He's more like Travis Himter. Dion warned us about that too. Travis himself warned us about that too. And then what's this dude do? Eh, not much. Just go out, ball out, show out on both sides of the ball. Hell, Coach Prime was ready to give this guy the Heisman at halftime. He had 11 receptions for 119 yards on offense and also a game-changing diving pick defensively and played 129 total snaps in the game. All after posting on Instagram before the game, a picture of himself with the caption, quote, Heisman loading, as in Heisman incoming. I mean, you know how bad these guys could have looked had they gone out and got their faces broken? But they knew. They knew. When nobody else knew, they knew. Now, granted, I get this. It's only one game. But it's already hard to see how he won't at least factor into the Heisman race. Vegas apparently agrees because this dude just went from plus 15,000 to plus 3,500 to win the thing after one game. He's that special. Now, I don't know if it's sustainable. I, I really don't believe this dude can play 129 snaps a week at that level. But I can tell you this. There have been two-way players before, but I have never seen anything quite like that. Freaking electric performance by an electric player who popped off before the game and then backed it all up. I mean, I guess there is a reason why he was the number one recruit in the entire country. So, no, I'm not hyping this because of Logues. I'm hyping this team because this team and this story are already absolutely incredible no matter what happens going forward. And I don't know what's going to happen going forward. I've only talked about the on-field part so far. We haven't even really gotten into the Coach Prime show, the Dion show, because the Dion show always delivers. Everything is like something out of a movie with this dude, which is why he always has a camera rolling on every single thing that happens. And he is so smart to do that. But really, it's better than a movie. Sports movies are never this good. In fact, they're usually lame as hell. And there's nothing lame about what's going on with the Buffs. 
which is why I'd love to see Dion going full Dion and clapping back at all the naysayers and doubters and haters after the game because he earned that right. He kept all the bull junk receipts, and now he's out to make everybody who isn't on that bandwagon look like a jack wagon. Again, I'm not saying anything is guaranteed here, but I'll admit that I all but guaranteed what happened Saturday was never going to happen Saturday. And it did. And it was an amazing thing to witness. Now I'm going to pencil them in. I'm not going to pencil them in for the college football playoff. At least not this year. But after seeing what they did Saturday, would anybody be surprised if somehow they made that kind of run? And best of all, if he says what he means, and he means what he says, he might not be going anywhere even if the guy probably could have an NFL head coaching job by the first bye week based on what he just did Saturday. Hey, listen, if it's true, and he means that, and by the way, things change, but if he means that and he is getting comfortable and he is not looking to leave, think about this. If he did what he did in nine months on that job, imagine what he might do after another year or two. Or three, if he's really comfortable. Imagine the four and five star guys that will start to come and be a part of this. Again, maybe that's not guaranteed. Maybe nothing's guaranteed. But I can tell you this. This dude in this program, this story, is the most intriguing thing in all of sports right now. And Folsom Field is going to be completely off the hook. I may put rogues to work on Saturday, make him a correspondent. Listen, let me give you some numbers really quickly. The 2022 Colorado Buffaloes ranked 126th in scoring offense, 130th in scoring defense. I don't care what happens going forward. Their their season is already a success one game in. And if you're still a hater, it's safe to say that you're really not objective in anything you do. I know, one game, but it was that good of a game. It was that astonishing. Oh, and don't look now. Look who's coming in. The once bitter and hated conference rival, Nebraska. There was a time when this was one of the best rivalries, one of the most bitter rivalries in all of college football. And man, the Huskers need this, right? They need this one badly after coming from ahead to choke in week one, as they have so many times before. Nothing will get that bad taste out of their mouth quicker than a win over Colorado, especially now that the entire world is watching Coach Prime and the Buffs. But, you know, Prime would like nothing more than to put on a damn show in his first home game with the entire nation looking on in a nationally televised game so he can once again say, told you so, told you so. Do you believe now? Do you believe now? Tell you what, this dude did come in with some Louis. In fact, not some Louis, but a Louis Vuitton Urban Satchel. And it's Louis. Price tag, 150 gur. What did TCU roll with? They grabbed their Travel Pro soft shell roll away from the luggage carousel. With a little tattered red ribbon tied around it. So we would know it was theirs. As much as I just hyped that up, I'm not sure that I hyped it up enough. Because as big of a win as that was on the field, I think it was even bigger off the field for Coach Prime. You tell me. You tell me what four-star or five-star or big-time recruit would not want to be a part of that. Especially right now. You get in, you play early, you play for a guy that you absolutely love, that you'll do anything for. That was an enormous win in every sense for that guy. Do you believe in that? And that program. Astonishing. Really astonishing. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell to be the first to know when we do upload a new video.